Hello, and welcome to Who Was Injured Cold? Recently, a viewer with the same name commented on one of my earliest videos, and I thought it would be an interesting topic to inform all of you of the story of the being known as Indrid Cold. There is a lot of mystery surrounding this presence, and I will attempt to sort it out here. Apparently, this being has also been given the moniker of the Grinning Man due to his odd smile, but I am unsure if this is accurate for the period of the sightings, or more of a name given with modern reimagining for creepypastas. With that said, the following are real reports and not creepypastas. However, if they're based on reality or just a hoax is yet to be determined. Our story starts on October 16, 1966, a month before the more well-known encounter in November. Two boys named Jimmy Yonkatis and Martin Munoff encountered what many believed to be Indrid Cold while walking down the 4th Street of their town in New Jersey. According to the boys, they saw a strange looking man standing by a close fence. Upon closer inspection, they said he was tall, bald, wore a metallic green suit, and had this huge, unhuman grin on his face. Once the man noticed them, he started to move towards the boys, who claimed they just ran away. Apparently, there were quite a few UFO sightings around the same time, which has led many to believe that the two were not coincidental. As stated previously, the most famous reporting came on November 6th of 1966 from Cedar Grove, West Virginia. A man named Woodrow Derenberger was driving his truck on State Route 47 headed to his house in Mineral Wells when he came across the strange alien craft sitting on the road blocking his path. Woodrow described the craft as looking like a glass chimney on an old kerosene lamp that was lying on its side, and it actually hovered about 8 to 10 inches off the ground. If you thought that would be odd enough, his night took an even more stranger turn. Suddenly a very tall humanoid being exited the craft and began walking towards Mr. Derenberger's truck. The being was described as standing over 6 feet tall and weighing about 185 pounds, so in other words he was fairly lanky. He wore an overcoat, but is described as having blue metallic clothes underneath. The being had a dark complexion with small beady eyes set wide on the face. He had dark black hair that was slicked back and his smile was inhumanly wide. The being was also reported to range between the ages of 35 and 40 years old. The man reassured Woodrow that he wouldn't be harmed and that he needed to remain calm, but all of this was done telepathically. The presence introduced himself as Indrid Cold and said that he was from a country that wasn't as powerful as the United States, but was here to learn about the human race. The conversation turned into questions about politics, weather, and Mr. Derenberger's family. All the while, Ingrid kept his hands tucked firmly under his armpits, as if to hide something. At the close of the conversation, Ingrid said that all would be revealed at the correct and proper time. With that, he returned to the craft and the UFO sped off into the sky. Woodrow claimed to have seen the arm of another being inside the craft's doorway when Ingrid approached it. Oddly enough, he also mentioned that during the conversation, the words, We eat, breathe, sleep, and even bleed as you do. We wish you no harm. We wish you nothing but happiness, was repeated in his head. During his lifetime, Woodrow claimed to have been contacted by these beings a few times, and even reported finding out that Indrid was from the planet Lanulo in the Genomedes galaxy. A very detailed report on this will be mentioned later. Not only this, but two other names were given for being similar to Indrid, which were Demo Hassan and Carl Ardo. On that very same night, two men traveling on Highway 77 had a similar encounter. The craft looked much the same as Woodrow had described, and a man with the same physical appearance approached the men. Much like Mr. Derenberger's description, the man kept his hands under his armpits and spoke to the two men on a broad range of general topics. Being satisfied with the answers, the man returned to his craft and sped off into the sky. The final sighting is frequently written off as simply paranormal energy, but it could offer an explanation to figuring out the identity of another mysterious being. Around the same time as the other sightings, the Lilly family of Point Pleasant, West Virginia were having a more unique encounter. Their house was inundated with poltergeist type activity and balls of light that formed diamond shapes. Linda, the daughter of the Lilly family, awoke one night to find a huge shadow of a man standing over her bed. She said she couldn't make out much, but she could see the presence had the same unearthly grin as Indrid. 
This being walked around her bed to get closer to her, to which she covered her head with blankets in terror. After a bit, she peeked out from the covers and the being was gone. Now after all that, Mr. Derenberger later did state that he was brought aboard the ship of Indrid Cold, and at a later date he was informed about their home world. According to his report, the planet is 14.6 light years from Earth and has a climate very similar to ours, only it has three seasons, planting, harvest, and cold. All this isn't that odd, especially when it is revealed that the planet's residents were originally from Earth prior to our civilization, and that the technology for space travel has apparently been lost. The people, known as Lunalusians, still look very much human, and their society doesn't wear clothes. This was mentioned in regards to Indrid claiming to have originally appeared on Earth nude, and it caused quite a stir, so he adopted wearing clothes while on Earth. The people do have a form of communication, but prefer to use telepathy. They aren't a warlike people, and they do have a government set up of a council of 56 people known as the Guiding Council, who are elected for their positions every six months. The Lunalosians do marry, and their wife is called the Union, and the husband is called the United. Indrid himself claimed to be married and to have two children. Their lifespan is 125 to 175 years in Earth time. They came back to Earth to open up trade between planets, but have come into conflict with the governments. Indrid stated that on several occasions they attempted contact, but were met with hostility, and he himself had been shot with a shotgun on a couple of occasions. So at this point, I want to look at a bit of the information that I just provided to try to glean some clarity. As a side note, I wanted to mention that most of these encounters occurred around the same time as the original Mothman sightings. There are a few different descriptions of what the being known as Indrid Cold looked like. Some of these are minor, while there is a report of the being not having hair, and in another case, the being didn't have hair, ears, or a nose. So what could this possibly mean? Being that reports mention other similar beings with different names, such as the previously mentioned Demo Hassan and Carl Ardo, other people may have seen different beings of the same species. Now, what about the poltergeist version that was spoken of? I propose that the well-known being called Hatman could possibly be from the same race. That is a little out there, but it could be an answer to who that specter actually is. Hatman looks similar to Indrid and carries the same characteristic behavior as what Linder described in her encounter. As with many reports of this nature, it leads to much speculation, as there really isn't proof other than eyewitness reports. What I do find interesting enough to mention here is that the story of the people of Lanulo were originally Earthborn, who went to space to find another home, and the technology has been lost to us. This theory sounds very familiar, and keep in mind these reports were mentioned well before the theorists of ancient aliens were mainstream. The other interesting thing is that Woodrow mentioned that Indrid used telepathy to talk. You may think, but many people report aliens using telepathic communication. You are right, but what is odd is that it wasn't commonly reported before Woodrow's encounter. Meaning, if he was making this up, he couldn't pull that information to inject his story with, being it wasn't talked about prior. This encounter is quite fantastic, and it leads many, including myself, to question if it was real, a case of mass hysteria, or just a figment of the imagination of a man trying to gain popularity. At this point, we will never know for sure, but what do you think? With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later. Before I end this video, I wanted to mention that I recently gained the sponsor of Audible.com. As many of you are aware, it is a site that has over 180,000 books in their library that range in all types of topics and interest. I honestly hate people plugging their sponsors as the next person, but this site has quite a few interesting books that pertain to the paranormal world. I'm currently listening to The Graveyard Book, which is about a kid who lives in a cemetery and is raised by ghosts, but if he ever were to leave, a man named Jack, who killed the boy's family, would get him as well. So if you're interested in starting your free trial, in which you get to choose a free book, click the link here, or the one in the description. It would help me out, and at the very least, you receive a free book out of the deal.